Roar. So we got a lot of stuff in common. But Alderman Leslie Harrison. Thank you all. So this, we are here in the fifth ward. This has been in the fifth ward for 24 years. For 24 years, we have been trying to develop this space. And now we are finally here. So I am so happy to be here. I am so happy to be a part of this. I am so happy to welcome everyone, all the faces from the community that has been around and has been in this fight for 24 years. This is a proud day. This is a project that has been put together by people that live in the neighborhood, by the city of Chicago, by myself and my buddy, Alderwoman Michelle Harris. Michelle. Thank you. So uh, today on behalf of the mayor and the governor and the senator and, uh, and of course, uh, Jim Reynolds and Susan and Derek, who are the people that have put this, and you're going to hear a lot more about them today. They are wonderful individuals. Um, I want to say thank you to them for believing and trusting in this community and helping us to reimagine what our community looks like. Uh, State Representative Marcus C. Evans is in the house. Did I acknowledge my other seatmate? Greg Mitchell is in the house. Uh, and if I missed anybody else, please forgive me. I, I, said, I said Senator. Where's Senator Sims? Where you at? See, you moved. You moved. So Senator, Senator LG Sims, uh, who has uh, been a very big part of this project, we appreciate him and all his input and everything he's done to bring this project together. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Regal Mouse Studio. Okay, one thing I was supposed to do. Um, for you all that don't know, Common's mom is my neighbor, and that's kind of like my connection <laughs> to, to Common. But Common is a, a wonderful young man who is going to do a wonderful presentation. Take it over, Common. Peace and a great congratulations, a big congratulations to Derek, Susan, Jim, and the Regal Mile team. What you all are creating on the South Side is incredible, it's world changing. It's changing the lives of so many of us who grew up in Chicago, who are part of the Chicago community, and it's really world changing. And I just wanna say we are grateful, we honor you, we thank you, and congratulations, God bless, love. is somebody who works really hard with me. She's a great partner. She's a great leader. Uh, anything the 8th Ward has asked for, she's never said no. And so I want you all, did y'all hear that? Yes, sir. Okay, did, anything the 8th Ward has asked for, she's never said no, y'all. So it ain't my fault if you don't have a relationship with the mayor of the city of Chicago. Uh, so, so let me say welcome to the fifth ward, uh, the mayor of the city of Chicago, who is doing wonderful things, helping us to move projects forward that will transform our community, the mayor of the city of Chicago. You know, it's a good thing when you come to South Shore and it's standing room only because people recognize something big and important is happening here today. So I want you all to look around. I want you to remember this feeling, this feeling of joy and excitement, because this is what's going to continue to happen over and over and over again. Now, Michelle did, I think, all the introductions, so let me add one more. We have our esteemed city treasurer, Melissa Conyers Irvin. So stand up, sister, and let, let people see you. And the reason why you see so many South Side electives here, because they all know that this investment is going to endure to the benefit of the entire South Side, and dare I say, to the entire city. 
So this is a big moment, a pride for all of us. Let me also introduce somebody who is relatively uh, new uh, to his new role, and that's our new D-Case Deputy Commissioner of Film, Zona, Jonah uh, Ziegler. Could stand up, Jonah. So I said to him, okay, we need more of this. We need more film, we need more TV, we need to make sure that we're creating jobs for people from these neighborhoods to go into um, the film and creative industry. Because let me just tell you folks, these are really, really good paying jobs. They're lucrative. And we need to make sure our folks are employed uh, every day of the year. Let me also, I'm gonna say a few words at the end about some of the folks who were most instrumental um, in making this moment possible. But as you know, um, COVID-19 really devastated our creative community here in Chicago. All right, the creative community for many of the folks who are just coming up maybe in the middle of their careers. This is a gig economy, right? You've gotta have uh, spaces for them to be able to get opportunities. It needs to be a city that's affordable, and it needs to be a city that supports our creative uh, economy. Um, putting aside the fact that this is billions of dollars that come into uh, the revenue stream of our city every year, our creative economy is really what sets us apart. We've got people in every facet of the industry, both in front of and behind the camera, um, creating art and music, all of the above. There's no place else on the planet like the city of Chicago when it comes to our creatives. But what we must do is continue to make sure that they recover from the pandemic. We, what we must do is make sure that we are continuing to invest in them. And at the height of the pandemic, when things look really bleak, we did what we always do. We sat down and we listened. And here's what we heard from the creative community. One is we've got to create more opportunities, obviously. But the other thing that we heard is, Mayor, we need the city itself to make an investment in the lives of the creatives in our city. And that's what we did. Historically, yeah. historically, the work that we did through D-Case and our great commissioner, Aaron Harkey, is also here. But historically, all of the investments that we made were tied to the hotel tax. Well, what happened to the hotel tax during the height of the pandemic? There was no revenue. So we had to change the formula and the way in which we funded our creative economy. And so what we did with the help of our uh, colleagues at city council is we said, Every year, minimum of $10 million, we are going to take from our corporate funds and make sure that we're putting it into arts and culture uh, uh, organizations at the block level all across our city. And that's what we've done. And in addition to that, we've used our ARPA dollars, we've used our social impact bonds to even add more of that. Right now, we are funding more in the arts and culture community in our city than we've ever done before. And we are all going to be the beneficiaries of it. Right, we're here um, because of the commitment that so many people have made um, to our community. And let me talk specifically about the announcement that we're making here today. This $100 million, did you hear that all? $100 million here in South Shore, okay? You can absolutely clap for that. State-of-the-art media campus will boast 220,000 square feet of studio space for residents to develop their film and media skills, as well as prepare to enter a career in the industry. So we've got to thank Jim Reynolds from uh, Luke Capital Markets at CEO. Jim is a, a son of Inglewood, but he sees the rest of the city too, so South Shore is gonna benefit. 
He'll give you more details about this project, but this is going to generate several positive impacts for South Shore and the surrounding community. For example, this studio will produce economic, reduce economic insecurity and inequity by providing new educational opportunities and job readiness training so that people come out of this training and go right into lucrative jobs in the industry. And what I'm especially excited about is it's going to create educational opportunities for Chicago public school students. That's a big deal. To learn more about and explore careers in television and film production training. That means this project will not only set many of our young people up for success, but will also enhance Chicago's reputation as an incubator of film and media talent. And what is the bottom line here is not only are we going to keep people home here in Chicago, they're not going to have to go to either coast or sorry Atlanta, you're not getting our people. <laughs> But it also means we are rebuilding the middle class here in Chicago, in black and brown Chicago, which is incredibly important. I'm also excited to share that Regal Mile Studios is coming to our city at the most opportune time. Despite COVID bringing the film industry to a near standstill, um, Chicago's film and TV industry has bounced back stronger than ever. And I gotta give a shout out also to Melody Hobson, who as part of our recovery team said, you know what, there's opportunities right here, right now. Let's put together a plan. Let's go to, let's go to Hollywood and tell them about the opportunities that are here in Chicago. And that's precisely what we did. So we are now expanding our capacity to produce high quality, authentic screen entertainment that captures the world's attention while simultaneously providing opportunities for Chicago residents. And over the last year, Chicago has served as a production center for 15 current, premiered, or upcoming television series, including some of those highly rated and critically acclaimed series on the air, filmed right here in Chicago. And while we don't have the final number yet, for 2022, we are projecting more than $700 million wow. in film production revenue. <laughs> Just think about what this new campus is going to do to substantially impact and improve those numbers. The, the sky truly is the limits. And I'm also pleased, of course, because this um, campus is right near an Invest Southwest site. Yeah. Invest Southwest, in case you haven't heard about it, <laughs> in case you didn't know, has shepherded $2.2 billion of public and private investment into historically disinvented, uh, disinvested neighborhoods on the south and the west side. And we have no intention of stopping there. The private sector, I have to tell you, has stepped up to support Invest Southwest and a number of our other initiatives in profound ways. When we introduced Invest Southwest back in the fall of 2019, pre-pandemic, which seems like a lifetime ago, we said the city itself will commit $750 million. And our hope is that we would get to a, million, a billion dollars with additional private sector uh, 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 supports. We have blown through those early um, estimations and more, more is coming. So this planned campus represents more than $100 million in brick and mortar investment and importantly, not one penny of city dollars is going into this. This is all raised by the private sector and we should be very proud of it. And we're celebrating obviously here in South Shore. South Shore is a great example of the type of clustered investment that Invest Southwest is designed to spur. To spur, in other words, not one and done, not something that will be in one location and not span out across a neighborhood, across the blocks. This is catalyzing exactly the vision that we had for Invest Southwest. So thanks to our holistic neighborhood and corridor-based investment strategies, as well as the relationship that we forge in South Shore, and with private and philanthropic partners, this corridor, 79th Street, is going to be filled with change and soon. 
So if you walk down 79th Street, you can also see the site of the upcoming Thrive Exchange flagship development, which is a transformative, also $100 million community investment that will provide South Shore residents with better access to health care, high quality and affordable housing, and the tools that they need to achieve financial stability. Soon you'll also be able to see the beginning stages of the 79th Street uh, Streetscape project. Thank you, Alderman Hairston, for being a persistent, dogged advocate in this work. Because that's why, no, that's why it's going to happen. Too long this community has been without. Too long people have wanted to see the streets uh, transform, safer, green spaces. But now, and now, it's coming. And this is going to provide safe, walkable, and attractive streets that will foster community and economic growth and add to what's happening here on this campus, as re well as reactivate neighborhood cores that have historically served as hubs for pedestrian activity, shopping, transportation, and so much more. And on top of that, we announced the third round of community development grant also in South Shore at the Country Club, which is another part of the work that we're doing to transform neighborhoods all across the city. During the third round, we awarded four local South Shore businesses close to $2 million in grant funding. And in total across the three funding rounds so far, and we're coming for another one, We've awarded 12 South Shore businesses with close to $6 million in grant funding. So I want to thank, um, first and foremost, Alderman Hairston, um, Alderman uh, Harris, um, both of whom are dogged advocates for their respective communities, and it doesn't happen without them. And truthfully, neither of them um, seek the limelight, they just do the work. And they need and deserve the credit because none of these things happen without them being there. So thank you both. And, and Jim, I, I gotta thank you. I mean, the, you, you could do a lot of things with your time and frankly, the resources and your well-earned earned success. But you're entering, I think, a new chapter in your life and a renaissance where you were saying, I'm going to get this done for my community, and you're doing it, man. And I appreciate you for it. And we are all the beneficiaries. And, and Derek, thank you so much. I, he's telling me when I was talking to him briefly, this was his neighborhood. This is where he grew up. Yeah. This is where he saw himself as a young man and thought about what his future. The fact that you are back here now and doing this, the work that you've been doing on the Shy and other projects, but putting a flagship down here, it's a tremendous, tremendous thing. So thank you so much. I also want to thank all the community members and creatives that are here that have shared your feedback on this project. It, your fingerprints, your ideas, your DNA are going to be streaming through this project, this campus, every step of the way. So, I think I've talked enough. It's time for me to yield the stage. Um, but it is exciting to be here with all of you uh, today. Great things are happening on the south side of Chicago and particularly in this community. And we are grateful for all of you have been the village to make sure that your ideas, your aspirations, your hopes are now becoming reality. And with that, I'm going to ask Jim Reynolds to please come. If anybody's wondering who's leading the charge on those thunderous applause, it's, it's my little brother Tim over there. I, I was wondering, I, I, usually people aren't this happy to hear me speak, but Tim, I appreciate it. Mom, mom, mom raised us well. Uh, now, Everybody that knows me if any, around the city 
and a fair number of people do and if you ask any of them to say something about Jim Reynolds, just one thing, just one thing, they're going to say, oh, Jim's from Inglewood. Yeah. That's what they're going to say. But Madam Mayor, let me tell you something. So I am from Inglewood, uh, raised pretty much to, in Inglewood till I was 16 years old. When I was 16 years old, my mother and her two sisters uh, put $2,500 together to buy a house on 80th and Jeffrey, right down the block, in 1969. And I transferred from Tilden Tech in Inglewood to CVS. What's ironic, and you think about, when you think about city flight, um, we moved right around the corner in 1969, I was 15 or 16, and we were the second black family or third on that block, 80th and Jeffrey. For some of the old timers, they remember how it used to be over here. Um, within a year, all of the white families were gone, and it was pretty much black, which was okay, because over here, and Madam Mayor, I'm gonna dog tail some of your comments with real life anecdotes. Over here was at the time when virtually every black person in this community had at least one job, maybe two. The steel mills were over there. Um, the slaughterhouses, we were actually the hog slaughtering capital of the world. 79th Street from the Dan Ryan all the way over, there was not a vacancy in any of the shops. Entrepreneurs and restaurants and clothing stores and record shops were all filled and bustling. The black community on the south side, 79th, 83rd, 87th, and the areas where I frequented, 63rd Street, were meccas of enterprise and entrepreneurship that's really what black people knew. You know, we had come up north to work in, as parts of the Great Migration. So instead of working down south for free, we actually came up here and actually had a chance to get great jobs. I want to give a few thank yous and I'm going to get back to, to some of this project. Madam Mayor, I've been around the city a long time, as you know. Um, and have had a chance to work with a lot of politicians because that's a part of the work that I do. But I remember in your campaign, and particularly in your election, you were the first mayor that I had ever heard lead with investment on the South and West Side. Actually lead with that to make that a cornerstone of your agenda and your administration. That's not ever been done. Uh, so I want to applaud you for that. I have been a strong advocate as I've sat downtown and I've watched resources leave the communities of the South and West Side and make their way downtown and North and Gold Coast and Lincoln Park uh, without a lot of discussion or significant debate about it or certainly not enough influence to stop that trend. But when the person on top, the CEO that answers to nobody except the people, lead with that, that really means something. So thank you, Matthew. Uh, uh, I want to I say thanks to a, a lot of people because a project like this can't happen without a lot of support, especially in this city. Because you have to build coalitions here or else the people will shut it down. That's just the way Chicago works. <laughs> you know, I, I, I do business in a lot of places and I tell folks that come here, I say, if you are going to Chicago, you better learn how we function in Chicago because you will not get your project gone. <laughs> Deputy Samir America, I didn't see Samir. I saw Michael Fosnaw. Oh, he's taking a, a well-deserved vacation. Uh, well, de oh, well-deserved. He's amazing. 
He has been, Madam Mayor, one of the most brilliant decisions you've made, among many brilliant decisions, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is, is putting Samir on that team. He really is a force of nature. Probably only weighs about 140 pounds, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, he can get stuff done. Michael Falsnow, yes, one of your strong leaders, tireless worker, really focused on getting projects done and moving this city forward. Want to thank you. Michelle Harris, you know, you, you, you're leaving in a couple months and every time folks try to talk you out of it, you smile broadly and say, no, nah, um, I've made up my mind. Uh, Leslie, I'm sorry, Leslie, Leslie, Leslie Harris-Dunn. Leslie Harris-Dunn, you're leaving in a couple months, obviously we've known each other for a couple decades, and I think you probably know my wife longer than that, yep. and, and Clarence and my team, yes, sir. you've been an amazing leader, we're gonna miss you. Yes, sir. And you know my little brother over there too, I know. Yes, All right. <laughs> Michelle Harris, you've kind of helped, <laughs> that's Alvin leading the charge on that one. Um, your guiding hand, and fingerprints are all over this project. Carrying us, helping us get this thing through, it's really been amazing. Something like this can't get done without that type of leadership, so thank you. Yes. Senator L.G. Sims. <laughs> thank you, my brother, for your guidance and, and leadership. And um, Commissioner Cox and the Planning of Department of Housing, Peter Hawley, it's been great. The Chicago Film Office, the Gersh Agency, Public Schools, Pedro Martinez, State Rep. Marcus Evans. Where's Marcus? Where? Marcus, we talked by phone the other day. So I definitely am happy to see you here. And thank you for your contributions. And by the way, you know, when Jim Reynolds gives a lot of thanks and everything, he usually follows that up with a request or two. <laughs> The mayor can tell you, the mayor can tell you all about that. Uh, uh, and World Business Chicago. Let me say a couple things about the yes, sir. My favorite treasurer, Melissa, thank you so much. Give my best to my good friend, your husband, Jason. Uh, thank you so much for your leadership. So coming from Chicago, I talk about it a lot. You guys hear me talk about it, but you're not with me when I travel, and I travel just about every day. Um, I go to every city, probably every city in the United States I've been through multiple times. Let me put it like this. Cities worth visiting I've been through multiple times. I ain't been to <laughs> Missoula, Montana, or something like that. But, and I talk about Chicago, and the people of Chicago, and how we get things done. I'm old enough to remember when I moved here, even when I came from Inglewood, I don't hardly ever remember locking our doors at night. Right yes, sir. When we moved here in 1969, yes, sir. and state, my house is still there, my brother owns it, yes, um, we didn't lock our doors, mm -hmm. we didn't have air conditioning, I slept with the windows open, yeah. and you stop and you think about those days and what's happening now. One of the reasons that we didn't have to fear for our safety or our belongings or someone taking something from you, everybody worked. Everybody had a job or two. The community was economically vibrant. So folks didn't steal from each other. They didn't feel compelled or the need to take your stuff because they had their own stuff. And also you had folks spending time and making time for their children. And the children had a sense of accomplishment, of hope, or of a better life, that there's something that they could lead to, something that's worth working hard, persevering for. The disinvestment stopped in the communities, and we saw a gradual decline. I can remember where it was so unusual to see a person on drugs where everybody in the neighborhood would say see that guy that, that that guy takes drugs it was so unusual to see that now it's commonplace 
And a lot of those things occur when economic vibrancy and, ac and activity leave a community. One of the reasons I'm so proud of this project, and I do a lot of projects, but this one is near and dear because one, we're gonna take these young people. We're gonna revitalize this community and bring economic activity and jobs and hope back. One of the things we committed to the mayor, we committed to the aldermen, we committed to the state senators and state reps. We're gonna go back and we're gonna grab these young kids that are so predisposed to the arts so predisposed to film and video and visual activities and we're going to train them how to do it we're going to put these studios here but these studios will not just be here importing workers from someplace else these studios are going to be here this investment is going to be here it's going to employ people from the community here just like we did with the activities here and it's going to train young people from the high schools here, starting with my old high school, CVS. And we're going to take those young kids and show them how to work behind the camera, how to do movies, how to do film, how to write, how to direct, how to act in. They're going to have their fingers on every aspect of everything that goes on in these roofs. I want to thank my partners, um, starting with Derek Dudley, who brought this project to me while we happen to be, and I don't do this all the time, so just be vague, in, engaging in activity in the south of France. I'll put it like that. And the last thing I expected was some brother from Chicago to walk up to me and say, hey, let me talk to you about this film project. Susan Cronin, the woman that really worked so hard to make sure the numbers work, the financing works, and everything gets done in that respect. My partner that you guys don't even know about, Chance the Rapper is with us on this deal. And Chance is just chomping at the bit because this is his community too. He, he said, Jim, you mean you gonna put studios behind that white castle? I said, yeah. Common, our other partner, the brothers coming together, and one more partner who's this close, so I'm gonna go to New York and see him. My good friend Derek Rose is coming in on this project. So what we wanna do is we wanna bring hope back to these young people. We wanna kinda show them that there are role models out here that are doing more things than yes, some sir. of the negative things that they see every day. Yes, if you see a young person, and I, I, I get fascinated by it, Madam Mayor, that they're 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, robbing people and carjacking people on cars and things that they don't even need. And they don't even know what to do with, but it is symbolic to me of a lack of hope. It's symbolic to me of the fact that they just don't think there's a future in doing the right thing, so I'm just gonna do the wrong thing. We wanna really start bringing that hope back to these young people to say, hey, no, 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 I'm, uh, guys, I'm not stealing any cars today. We're gonna go and I'm gonna get a job up at that studio, and I'm gonna learn how to work a camera and how to shoot a movie. Those are the things that I get excited about, that I run to this project about, and I'm just thrilled to say. Madam Mayor, your leadership, your support, the support of your communication, your, your administration on this has been invaluable. Your leadership and your steadfast commitment to South by Southwest, and I read the newspapers like everybody else, and you, 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 like you, probably you discount half of what you read, if not, if not 90%. This is strong commitment, it is purposeful commitment, and it's the right thing to do. So thank you so much for your leadership on that. Uh, I think I will, I'm gonna stop right here and just say, you guys are gonna see a lot of me around here 
I ran these streets up and down as a teenager, and it's good now to run them up and down as a 60-some year old. So with that, I think it's my part. Who's coming up next? All right, then. Gwendolyn Jones. That's you. Wow. Let me just say wow. Um, I'd like to recognize that Pastor John Hanna is in the building. Hey! Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to go off script for just, just one half second. And I want to throw out a name, Lorraine Dixon, who, is the, who was the A Ward uh, Alderman and her her niece is here, and uh, it's a blessing. So we used to have meetings with Lorraine Dixon Alderman, and she brought to us ideas and visions of this area, this community. And it's just, I know she's smiling, because it's happening. And so now I'm gonna go back on script. <laughs> All right, good afternoon. I am the president of the community organization Subcall. And it is an honor and a pleasure to be here among all you fantastic neighbors, community members, activists, and you dignitaries that are here. All you wonderful elected special people that are here. We are just so blessed. We, I'm so thankful anyway. Uh, so I'm the president of the community organization, SUFCO, and it is an honor to be here. I want to thank Mayor Lightfoot and Alderman Harris and, and uh, Alderman Harrison for working to bring improvements to this community. South Shore Unified Block Club and Business Organization, or SUFCO, is, as our name implies, a group of block clubs and businesses in the area working together to improve the neighborhood for more than 15 years. Most of the members of the group and their families have been residents of the community for as far back as 40 years. I've been here for about 45 years. I know there's a young lady over there and her husband been here about 50 years. Through all the changes that have taken place here in that amount of time, we have always, always maintained a vision of this community as a growing, thriving area that attracts vital and interesting businesses to our 79th Street corridor or the nine as we affectionately call it. Together with Alderman Harris and her magnificent staff, we will continue to work to make improvements that are necessary, which is why we are thrilled, overjoyed, to welcome the Regal Mile Studio Project to the neighborhood. A special thank you to Mr. Dudley and his partner and to the whole team that are coming here to make a difference in our community. We are so excited that the decision was made to put this project here in our neighborhood and we are grateful for that. Bringing a film and TV business to this area will certainly be inspiring for the youth in the neighborhood, making them aware that this is an industry in which they could have a successful career. The facility itself will beautify and improve the look of the area and hopefully inspire other major businesses to come we look forward, in my conclusion, we look forward to having you as a neighbor business, and we will be so proud to have our South Shore considered, and I'm quoting this, the Hollywood of the Mid Midwest. <laughs> yeah, and I am introducing the next speaker to come, and his name is Jonah Zeigler. I got it. Thank you so much, Gwendolyn, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is a special, special day. I can feel the energy in the air, and I am honored and privileged to be here. Um, I want to thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, for 
uh, choosing me, uh, appointing me to serve in this very special role. I'm thrilled and I'm honored and I'm extremely pleased to be here during this momentous occasion. What a great way to start. So good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Jonah Zeiger. I'm the new DCASE Deputy Commissioner for Film at the Chicago Film Office in the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. Um, on behalf of DCASE Commissioner Aaron Harkey, who's here in the audience with us, I want to extend greetings and congratulations to the mayor, to all of our elected officials, to all of our special guests here gathered today to celebrate this state-of-the-art media campus breaking ground here in the heart of Chicago's South Shore neighborhood. Um, so today is really about Regal Mile and what this means. I, I believe this is a new chapter, a new era is about to begin, and it's thrilling to um, get the opportunity to serve and help this community um, in the film and television industry. Um, but since this is my very first public speaking engagement, I just wanted to say a little bit about myself <laughs> so you know who I am, because I want to be your film commissioner for the city of Chicago. Um, so my door is always open, reach out, connect, we'll talk, we'll make great things happen. This is a great thing that's happening today. I want to make more of these great things happen. Um, so just a little bit about me. I've served in various capacities um, at the intersection of film and television, higher education, the arts and culture, nonprofits, and professional development for creatives and creative teams. Since coming to Chicago about 15 years ago, I helped build some programs at Northwestern University and DePaul University that help students bridge the gap between and help them get real world experience in the entertainment industry and find the crucial mentorship and support that they need from industry professionals as they rise up. I've also partnered with nonprofit partners to help open the doors to this dynamic in industry while at the same time making, those making sure those entrants are uh, ready to walk through those doors when they open. I've had the joy of watching so many of my former students and mentees stretch their abilities and achieve their dreams in this industry and that is a very gratifying experience. I bring that to this role and my role here I see as supporting and focusing a citywide strategy to maximize the extraordinary potential of Chicago's talent, energy, physical and financial resources to help build an entertainment industry that serves the whole city and puts Chicago stories on screen like never before. The team that is behind this, uh, this project, Regal Mile, has already done this. They have already proven themselves. They are already some of the most important uh, players in the, in the industry. But there is more talent, both potential and connected to the industry, that we want to bring to create a critical mass to really game change and transform what film, television, entertainment, and media can be in the city of Chicago. Um, as the mayor mentioned, in the last year, despite the incredible setbacks um, and challenges of COVID, Chicago has played host to 15 long-running television series that have either premiered or uh, that are airing now, have premiered, or are in the pipeline. This is pretty extraordinary news, but we can do even better, we can do even more. What I'll say right now is the world is watching us, the world is watching Chicago, watching the incredible stories, the incredible content, the incredible talent that is coming out of this community, and they're about to see a lot more of us in the years to come. Um, the Regal Mile Studios represents a major step forward in building out the infrastructure that we need for the film industry in Chicago to truly come into its own. Furthermore, Regal Mile is a vertically integrated business model and positioned itself to be a game changer for both the cultural and economic growth for the south side of the Chicago by serving as a catalyst for the development of an arts and entertainment district for this historic yet underserved area of the city. Um, I want to give a special shout out to the Regal Mile team, to Derek Dudley in particular and his team at ID8 um, and all of the others. Susan Cronin, and all of the other key players. Um, Jim, your contribution is extraordinary, that have come together to make this happen. Um, we have city, state, private sector partners helping to get here, and I just want to say respect. Um, on that note, I want to bring a special greeting and congratulations from my predecessor in this role, who I believe many of you may know, Kwame Amawako. 
uh, who we have temporarily lost to New York City. I believe it's temporary. Um, he, he wrote me this morning and he said, congratulations and I wish I could be here. I know Kwame, along with Peter Hawley from the Illinois Film Office, were in on the very early stages of helping smooth the way to make, um, to make it possible for us to be here. And Qu Kwame said, you know, as a son of the South Side, it's very exciting, it's very gratifying for him to see Regal Mile breaking ground in his old neighborhood. And he asked me to send his best to each and every one of you, especially to Derek. Thank you. Um, as many of you know, uh, the Chicago Film Office, which is part of DCASE, leads the city's efforts to attract and support the production of all forms of screen entertainment, including TV series, feature films, documentaries, commercials, digital content, and more. For filmmakers and production companies, it is a one-stop liaison for all the city of Chicago's production needs, including permits, city services, and logistical support. Uh, we're here to help anyone who has an asset of value in the entertainment industry and wants to make more of it, make a movie, make a project, get a television series started. We're here to help to smooth the ways to make sure you do it properly and legally, but also to make sure that you connect with the people who may help you elevate that project to have even more cultural impact, even more artistic quality, even broader audience reach to show the world what Chicago can do. Um, and in that regard, I, I will say that I'm proud to say that the City of Chicago partners with the Illinois Film Office to award a 30% tax credit uh, for film, television, and advertising productions that can demonstrate qualified expenditures on local crew goods and services. Um, as has been mentioned, the projected revenue from last year was $630 million. We are projecting that we will set another record this year. We're eager to see those numbers in the near future, um, but by no doubt it is continuing to grow. Um, and on this note, I just want to give a special shout out to my counterpart at the Illinois Film Office, Peter Hawley. Great stand up for a second, Peter, say hi. It was absolutely essential in this process, and I really appreciate our partnership when the city and the state work together, we can do great things for the film and television industry, and I'm confident that that partnership will continue. Um, and make more things like what we're celebrating to hear take place, Regal Mile Studios. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce the driving force behind Regal Mile Studios, the person without whom we would not be here today, Mr. Derek Dudley. Please give a hand. Congratulations on Regal Mile Studio. Let me tell you something. I live in Los Angeles, California. Actually, Hollywood, California. A city where people say they're going to do stuff, but they don't be doing it. I'm so proud of you bringing Regal Mile Studios to life in the south side of Chicago. It's going to be big for the city, big for the south side. Uh, this is just going to give an opportunity for all those who have an interest in the world of television, film, video making, all of the arts. It is going to have such a huge impact on the south side of Chicago, which happens to be right outside of my window right now. Congratulations on bringing the Regal Mile Studios to life. I know it's going to have a profound impact on the south side of Chicago, and uh, we're just really grateful that you're doing this. I think it's super important. Congratulations on Regal Mile, putting that on the south side of Chicago. I know how crazy it probably was to get this going, and how excited you are. And what you're doing for your hometown with this studio project is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal, right, Chris? We don't even know, but it's, it's phenomenal. I know it's going to have an amazing impact on the city, doing big things. I'm proud of you. Ah. And it's going to make me such a, such an impact on the south side of Chicago, man, providing jobs and opportunities for everybody, man. It's going to be an amazing look for the city. Whatever your vision is, I know in my heart that it will be seen through in something that will enhance everybody's experience in some kind of way. And this is what we're all about, creating more opportunities, creating more community and just more space for people to do what they want to do on their own terms. This is a big move, bringing that work back to your city. 
I love it. Congratulations. This is a big accomplishment. Uh, everybody who's involved, man, kudos to y'all. Uh, keep up the great work and much, much success. As I pass Auburn Gresham, heading into the 100s, and still going south, just know that your star is gonna rise and continue to rise. Congratulations. May it bring lots of love, creativity, and great art to the city of Chicago. Man, 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 man. So, uh, I'm not a public speaker, so bear with me. I'm, I'm usually behind the scenes, but um, man, that's heavy. I just need a moment to take it all in. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I first want to give honor and praise to God for allowing us to be here today and to further recognize that through him, and when I say through him, I mean it, all things are possible. It's a beautiful sight to look out in this audience. I mean, wow. <laughs> I'm just a little kid from the south side of Chicago. I grew up here right down the street on Euclid Avenue. This area was my backyard. So I'm so happy and blessed to be here today and to thank you all for coming. My parents taught me to dream big. I was always the littlest amongst my friends growing up, but it never bothered me. It actually served as motivation and inspiration that though I was smaller in stature, I could be as big as my mind allowed me to be. So I was always the little guy with the big ideas. One of my best friends growing up said he wanted to be a rapper, and I believed him. I also believed I could help him fulfill his dream, and his dream very quickly became our dream. For 32 years, I stood behind him as his manager pushing him, strategizing, planning and executing with him. Together as a team, we sold millions of albums, toured the world over, won multiple Grammy Awards, a Golden Globe Award, an Emmy Award, and even an Academy Award. And while all those great accomplishments we shared together through that journey were great, the most positive one, or the most impactful one, I should say, was the positive impact we had on people around the world. How the music he made and the choices we made together profoundly affected people and brought joy to their lives. That friend was to me Rashid, or Rosh, to the, west, to the rest of the world, especially here in Chicago, he was known as Common. And though he cannot be here today in person, I want to say to him, were it, were it not for his friendship, his belief and trust in me, that my big ideas mixed with his talent would help fulfill his dreams and mine, I sincerely want to thank you, bro. What I learned from our journey together was, is, was if you want to accomplish a dream, you cannot do it alone. I do not stand on this stage by myself. I'm, be, I'm here because of so many people that have helped inspire me throughout my life and this journey in particular. I want to just take a moment to thank them publicly. Many of them, you may have heard their names before, but a lot of them have a very profound meaning to me. I would like to thank both of my amazing parents that are here today, Dennis and Betty Tut Dudley. If I left the Tut out of my mom's 
name, I would certainly be hearing about it after this. Um, <laughs> but I want to thank you not only for giving me life, but most importantly, being the most loving, supportive, and guiding parents a son could ever ask for. Thank you for providing me with such a strong foundation of love for myself and for others and my belief in a higher power. I secondly want to thank my beautiful, intelligent, and super creative life partner and mother of my two most incredible children that I could ever ask for, Chantel. I love you beyond words. I truly thank God for you every day. You inspire me to be great, to be a better person, and I thank you for being the backbone and support system and for believing in me. Both our children could not be here today. Our 13-year-old daughter, Lotus, is a bookworm. She refuses to miss school for anything short of a natural disaster. <laughs> Gotta love her. I said, listen, you can fly to Chicago and have a day off of school. She said, no, nah, I'm going to school. I said, okay. But I know she's here in spirit and I love her dearly. Our six-year-old son, Phoenix, is here, who you've probably seen running around. It was really important for him to be here. I wanted him to be here. I wanted him to skip school and get on a plane and fly to Chicago so that he could see daddy at work. Because I want him to know that whatever you want to do as a young black boy who has the deck stacked against you in life, you can overcome all obstacles. You can accomplish every goal and fulfill every dream you have with faith in God first, hard work, dedication, and the right intention. I love you, Phoenix. You are my perfect reflection. There's so much I learned from you each day. I next want to thank my team and my partners without whom this project does not exist. They believed in me. They bought into my vision with the same belief that we were going to do something meaningful and impactful on the south side of Chicago. I have to start with a huge and sincere thank you to Jim Reynolds, and the amazing people and team at Loop Capital. To Joseph Daba, my partner and my patient and giving partner, who's kind of the silent assassin on the team. Thank you, Joe, for being a part of this team and for believing in this. To uh, Robin McKay, my Irish brother. <laughs> leading the charge and helping to keep the glue together. Thank you, man. Thank you for venturing down to the south side of Chicago at a moment's notice. To Joe Faust and Dakota Development for helping to guide this entire process. To Tim and Ed and the team at Bauer Latosa for all your time and attention on the design front. To DLA Piper and their amazing team Though the legal work is expensive, it helped, us get, it helped get us here. Thank you. <laughs> um, I then have to say, um, man, a heartfelt thank you to Mayor Lori Lightfoot for her leadership and vision for creating Invest Southwest, for recognizing the need to invest in our communities in a, in a meaningful way, I have to thank you and your entire staff and team at City Hall under your leadership for making this such an incredibly smooth path, for clearing out all of the so-called political red tape. I, along with the rest of our team, sincerely thank you and applaud you for the work you have done, for the work you are doing, and for the work you will continue to do as a great leader of this city.
I want to also thank uh, Deputy Mayor Samir, who's not here today, uh, Adam Shimmer. Uh, your tireless work is very appreciative, appreciated. To Commissioner Maurice Cox and the Department of Planning, thank you for your unwavering belief. To Chip Hastings, to Jim Harbin, to Alderman Leslie Harrison, thank you for your support. I also want to thank Kim in your office. She was always very helpful. Um, I want to thank um, my brother, Alderman Greg Mitchell. Looking good, man. I ain't looking good. Whatever you're doing, I need to do. Man, thank you, brother. Thank you for all your support. Um, I want to thank Senator LG Sims, thank you, brother. You're doing a lot of great things, and I appreciate your work. I appreciate your support. Um, Jonah and Peter Hawley in the film office wouldn't be here without you, and thank you for your amazing support, and look forward to working with you even more as we move forward. I also have to thank um, CPS CEO Pedro Martinez for all of his support and the amazing work he's doing thus far in the city and the amazing work we are going to do together building a workforce training program on the south side of Chicago to complement Regal Mouth Studios and lay the foundation for career development and economic stability on the south side. To my agent, and partner at Gersh Agency, Roy Ashton. Thank you for everything you have done to help support me personally and professionally and this project overall. It means a lot and I thank you for being here today. Now, lastly and most importantly, I have to say that black women are gonna change the world. And there are several amazing black women who have been a part of this project from the beginning. And this project does not exist without their belief and their timeless commitment. My second mother is Dr. Mahalia Ann Hines. She can't be here today, but many of you may know her as Common's mother. She's been my second mother since fourth grade. She was the first person I actually called when I had the idea for Regal Mile Studios. I told her, I want to build a film studio on the south side of Chicago. I think it's in your ward. Uh, do you happen to know who the alderman is? She said, of course I do. It's alderman Michelle Harris. She's a dear friend of mine and my neighbor. She said, give me a second. She clicked over, called alderman Harris, and, with, and within two days, I was standing on the corner of 79th and Stony Island, <laughs> walking the neighborhood with Alderman Harris, talking about my vision and, and this project. <laughs> I cannot thank Dr. Hines enough for always believing in me, supporting me, loving me, and most importantly, connecting me with Alderman Michelle Harris. To Alderman Michelle Harris, we're not here today without you. As I've gotten to know you over the last few years, I see the unshakable love you have for this city and especially for the people of your ward and the community. I see how you fight for them on a daily basis. And I want to ensure you are here to fight for them for many more years to come. This community, this ward, this city needs you. It is through your tireless effort and hard work we are able to get to the finish line, and I sincerely thank you. To Lisa Washington, in the Department of Planning and Development, 
She better still be here because I told her don't leave early. <laughs> Lisa, where are you at? Are you serious? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> well, you make sure I told her this. You don't get enough credit. I wanted to make sure I singled you out because you deserve so much of this credit for making Regal Miles Studios a reality. You're truly a shining star, a gift, and I so appreciate everything you have done to help guide this project. To my brother, Alvin Ryder. Though you're not a, though you're not a black woman, <laughs> you're, you're an incredibly strong black man. And you're doing so much to help change the south side of Chicago and to change the shape of this city. And I thank you, brother, for your support and your guidance. My last thank you is for someone that has become my Korean soul sister. And while I say that jokingly, I don't say it lightly. Whew. Mm. Mm. She's not only my business partner, she's my friend. She's been a mentor to me in many ways. To Susan Cronin, I am not on this sta stage today without your friendship, without your guidance and your belief. Certainly without your money and your investment. <laughs> um, but along with your relentless work effort and dedication, I cannot thank you enough for being a part of my life. As I close out, I just want to say that Regal Miles Studios is not my project. It's our project. This is for the people of this community and the people of this great city. May it stand as a beacon of light, a symbol of hope, of what is possible, and an inspiration to all of us. The greatest gift you can give someone else is inspiration. I hope I stand here today as an inspiration to someone else, as others have inspired me. May we all leave here not only inspired, but dedicating to loving one another more as a family, to lifting up one another and serving one another more, knowing that by helping others, we are helping ourselves. I love and thank you all. As my brother Kenny Burns would say, the dream is real.